Finding a place to eat familiar food is an important part of the immigrant experience, but so is becoming politically active in your new community. To that end, I'm on my way to meet Linda Sarsour, Executive Director of the Arab American Association. Welcome. It's great to see you here. That's my, you know, it's my I know, home. I know all about your political work, but I hadn't realized how much it was also a social services organization. Well, that's the heart of it. You know, gotta help, you got to help the, the people, and then you get to hear their stories, and you get to then know what issues you got to fight for. So yeah. that's, how I, that's how I get informed on the issues I work on. Yeah. Okay. And just, you know, we talked to John Mollenkopf this morning a little bit about the demographics. He was saying the median income is about 65000 uh, for a family. Um, can you just give something of a portrait of the kinds of jobs people might have? So uh, what we know from the U.S. Census is that um, people say, you know, Arab American community are highly affluent and well-educated. And I think that uh, that has changed over the years for me anyway, particularly mm -hmm. with the work that I do and where I am now. Many folks coming from conflict part, you know, parts of the Arab world are low income. Um, mm -hmm. Some families, five to seven people living in a one bedroom apartment, taxi cab drivers. Um, we have uh, restaurant workers, um, you know, people working in bodegas and small stores around here. We absolutely have a huge, you know, doctor community and professional mm -hmm. community as well. But I think oftentimes um, there's a big like overall generalization that we are a very you know well-to-do community, and in fact that's not really the case, especially not with the clientele that we see um, at this organization. And what about the politics? So my stereotype is that um, I don't know if it's stereotype, but I have a general sense that Arab Americans are not that politically active in this area. Is that true? I think we have come a long way yes. um, in years uh, past. Uh, this community where we are in South Brooklyn, Bay Ridge, is a predominantly conservative Democrats and Republicans, um, mm -hmm. not very progressive on many issues, including on things like policing. Mm -hmm. uh, the Muslim community is actually, interestingly enough, the most progressive, or at least of the most progressives of the district um, on many issues. That's really interesting. Immigration reform, mm -hmm. on issues of uh, corruption, on issues of, you know, um, language access and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, things like supporting municipal IDs in New York City, very big on that. Obviously, on policing and police reform. There's, there's many strides in this younger generation of Arab Americans understands the importance of political engagement mm -hmm. and are much more visible and out there about their issues and what they stand for. So I think that vibe is really being helpful to us here in the area. Well, obviously you're a big part of this, but <laughs> so what are, what are external things that the Arab American Association of New York has been doing? So the Arab American Association of New York has taken local campaigns that we've been working on in New York City and giving them national platforms. So mm -hmm. when we talk about ending uh, surveillance of Amer Arab Americans and Muslims by the New York Police Department, we also know that this is happening in other jurisdictions around the country. So mm -hmm. how do we amplify what's happening in the organizing work happening in New York City and other places in the country? And, and that's been really important to us. And we've gotten a lot of platform on civil rights issues, national security reform. This district that you are in right now was the most heavily targeted by NYPD surveillance. Mm -hmm. Uh, to the point where in secret documents, we saw them say things like, sitting at the coffee shop, they were speaking in Arabic. No, really, like what were they supposed to be speaking <laughs> right. in there? Like, so even even the language being mm. criminalized. You know. It's actually really interesting, right? Looking at the language, not from the inside, but from the outside, like what the language has meant and the idea of the, the language itself was a sign of criminality mm -hmm. for the NYPD. It's central to our culture, but it's been demonized. Right, and, and how have people in this community then responded in terms of telling their kids about speaking Arabic out in the world? world. Is there any sense of there being a danger in talking publicly in Arabic? or So it's been the opposite. It's been some of the younger people who sometimes are like, no, I don't want to speak Arabic, telling their parents, like, don't oh. speak Arabic outside. Or even in some of the reports that we saw um, from the media around after we found out that the NYPD is spying on this community, where some of the coffee shops wouldn't put Al Jazeera, like the news channel up, because they uh -huh. didn't want to provoke conversations that were political. Um, mm -hmm. So they're only watching sports all day long, and then the fact that people have to change who they are or what they usually do. Like Arabs are inherently political. Like we have, we can't. That's like part of our blood. Like we can't not be political. Mm -hmm. All of us are like senior political analysts. We could solve all the problems of the Middle East, but we haven't yet. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that people don't feel like they can be political in their own community, I think, is a um, is just it just shows you the infringement on civil rights of Arab Americans and Muslim Americans. It's fact. It's real. It's happening. Okay. They just called me. So I'm gonna okay. see if they are. Okay. <laughs> it's always great to see you. Oh my God. Thank you. You're welcome. For the past nine years, the Arab American Association has been holding its annual bazaar 
It's an amazing event that features live musical and dance performances alongside vendors selling Middle Eastern food and artifacts. And I think it helps dispel misconceptions about Arabs and highlights the fact that this culture is not monolithic. <laughs> 